Welcome back to the playlist on amino acid catabolism. Uh, we've been talking about histidine catabolism, and we mentioned that the committed step in the catabolism is catalyzed by histidine ammonia lyase. And in this video, we're actually going to look at the mechanism. And part of the reason we do that is because this is a very, very strange mechanism. And this goes to show that there are quite a few very bizarre post-translational modifications to proteins. And part of uh, the active site of histidine ammonia lyase, there's a coenzyme, and it's actually part of the enzyme, and it's called methylidine imidazole, often abbreviated MIO. And it's actually, it's actually like this in the whole family of enzymes. And essentially, that's what this is right here, methylidine imidazolone, okay? And this is the cofactor that we're going to use to deaminate uh, histidine. In other words, we're removing ammonia and in the process forming an alkene. Okay, so I'll do the mechanistic steps in purple. The first mechanistic step is going to be ligation of the imidazole ring of histidine to the methylidine imidazolone cofactor. Okay, so this lone pair is going to kick in here to form a pi bond, and this pi bond is going to come out and attack this carbon that's part of the alkene, forcing these pi electrons in here and these pi electrons onto the oxygen, generating an enolate. And you can see the enolate right here. Okay. So now we have effectively ligated histidine to the methylidine imidazolone cofactor. Okay, in the next step, a base in the active site is going to deprotonate histidine. So it's going to deprotonate, in fact, this would be the beta carbon, right? Here's the alpha carbon, here's the beta carbon, right? It's going to deprotonate the beta carbon, and you're going to have a double bond rearrangement in which this pi bond right here ends up as a lone pair on the nitrogen of that particular shift base, or at least that protonated shift base, right? Okay. And in the next step of the mechanism, what's going to happen is we're actually going to do the deamination. So this lone pair, this lone pair that is on this, this amine is going to kick in here, right? And that's going to force this, these pi electrons right here, and that's going to cause the deamination and loss of the leaving group. And as it leaves, as ammonia, ammonia leaves, it's going to pick up the proton from the base. So ultimately, this proton right here, that came from the beta carbon of histidine and so effectively what you can say based on this mechanism is it's a oops and that was a, an email anyway sorry if you heard that anyways what you can say about this mechanism is it's it is a beta elimination right it's a beta elimination it's a complicated one that involves methylidine and midazolone but it is a beta elimination nonetheless right we did a proton transfer and then we had loss of a leaving group so this is just a beta elimination Okay, now what we have is we have this E double bond, right? If we were to if we were to assign configuration to that double bond, it would be E, right? And we still have this this urocanate group, right? This this group up here, okay? The hist that what was histidine, this is called a urocanate urocanate group, okay? And it's still ligated to the methylidine imidazolone. So what we're going to have to do is is undo that attachment and to do that we're going to get rid of this enolate so these electrons are going to kick in here to form the carbonyl and that's going to force these pi electrons to attack this carbon and cause a rearrangement of the of the imidazole ring so these electrons kick in here and that forces these pi electrons onto the nitrogen so in that case what our leaving group is is this molecule right here and this molecule is called urocanate this is urocanate, and it will be consumed by the next enzyme in the pathway called urocanate hydratase. Okay, and in the process, look at what we have. We regenerate our methylidine imidazolone. Okay, and that's critical because, after all, it's covalently attached to the enzyme. And by definition, enzymes have to regenerate their resting state, their biological catalyst, so they have to be net unchanged at the end of the reaction. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of this mechanism, okay? So keep in mind, we have this methylidine imidazolone cofactor in the active site, and really what it is, is it's just a post-translational modification of the enzyme. Okay, so in the first step of the mechanism, we're going to have ligation of histidine to the methylidine imidazolone cofactor, okay? So 
these electrons kick in here to form a pi bond, and then we get the attack on this carbon right here, and that forms the enolate. Okay? And we're going to maintain that enolate throughout the next step. So a base, this base right here, then deprotonates the beta carbon. It deprotonates the beta carbon of, of histidine, and that forces a double bond rearrangement and destruction of this particular shift base right here. Right? And then and then in the next step the pi bond at least the shift base reforms and that causes elimination now my question to you is this here's my question based on this this these mechanistic steps that we just saw right is this going to be an e1 or an e2 and if you remember eliminations that were bimolecular in nature those were a concerted process right you had proton transfer followed by loss of the leaving group and they were it was a concerted process whereas e1s were stepwise right where you had you had proton transfer followed by some intermediate step and then loss of the leaving group right so my question to you is this e1 or e2 and you look at it and you say, okay, well, we had a proton transfer, and then we moved the, the double bonds around, right? So you can say that the proton transfer and the loss of the leaving group are in different steps, are not concerted. So this is going to be an E1 mechanism, okay? So this step right here, this is going to be E1. It's a unimolecular elimination, okay? And in this step, of course, I didn't draw it, but we're going to lose ammonium. So NH4+, plus. we're going to lose ammonium. Okay, and at this point, we have this urocanate group with an E configuration double bond that's ligated to the methylidine imidazolone cofactor, and in this next step, we're going to get rid of it. And so by doing that, we just, we, we, we essentially re-tautomerize this group right here. It's going to re-tautomerize from the enolate. We're going to reform the carbonyl, and that's going to eject the urocanate. And it's the leaving group, okay? So this right here, again, this is urocanate, and remember, it's going to get consumed by urocanate hydratase, which is just going to do an alkene addition, basically. And then we regenerate this guy, which is our methylidine imidazolone cofactor. So I hope this gave you a little bit of intuition and a little bit of... Um, a little bizarro cofactors, right? This is a bizarre cofactor. We've never seen this before. And in general, in terms of mainstream enzymes, we won't see it again. So I hope this video helped. See you in the next video.